Welcome. Today we are focusing on getting organized with digital portfolios and maybe you are someone who is moving from a paper portfolio system to a digital portfolio system and we're going to kind of walk through various aspects of both today. I'm Angela. I taught kindergarten for 15 years. I have, I'm a mom of two kiddos. I have now a fourth and seventh grader and I lead the community team here at Seesaw supporting teachers getting going and also staying engaged with Seesaw as well from all over the world. So you can follow me at Mrs. Gadkey. Let me know how you're doing with your seesawing and let's talk about a couple other things to note if you are watching this recording. We do offer certificates of completion for this session so you're just going to want to listen for a six character code that I give throughout the session and you'll fill out a form that is available in the video description or in a follow-up email if you're watching the recording. So today's plan is that we are going to first talk about different types of digital portfolios and their purposes. We are going to work on creating folders and everyone's favorite topic, ease your workflow, right? Save yourself some time. And then we're going to visit the topic of preparing for conferences, which you might have coming up. And then we're hopefully going to have a chunk of time at the end for your questions. So. The first thing I want to just jump into are the various types of digital portfolios. So really when you start maybe wrapping your brain about a digital portfolio or a portfolio in general, there's three main kinds that are usually talked about, a process for portfolio, showcase portfolio, and assessment portfolio. So even though they have some maybe similar characteristics, they're slightly different. So a process portfolio would really be a space that your students can use to document their learning throughout um, maybe a unit or throughout the process of a project. And it doesn't have to be a final, beautiful end product that is only going into the portfolio. Now a showcase portfolio in on the other at side of that would be mostly focused on really um, including that last piece of work. Maybe it shows a couple beginning stages, but mostly showcasing your best work at the end. And then an assessment portfolio, you might use that for gathering formative assessments or um, showing evidence of your work supporting various skills or standards. So I also linked to an article that actually goes a lot more in depth in on this topic, but just generally um, that those are about the three main types of portfolios that are usually talked about. And the great thing is Seesaw can be all three for you. So you could use it um, in each of those various ways, or maybe you want to really get started using it uh, one particular way and then maybe add other components. So um, we're also going to talk today about folders and folders actually will also allow you to um, not only get a little bit more organized, but also be able to filter and sort out your folder, your portfolio, or your students can do that as well. So that can also be a place where maybe within a process portfolio, like you're using, maybe you're starting with that with Seesaw and you want to pull some things out to really have more of a showcase portfolio, your folders might come in handy for that type of work as well. So I want you just to think for a moment and take a second to first think about your purpose. Why are you hoping to use Seesaw? What are you hoping to, what need are you hoping to fill with the portfolio that you are creating? So think about that for a moment. Um, I always encourage teachers to, no matter what they're doing in their classroom, start first with your purpose. So just kind of giving you a brief introduction to the various types, you may have already picked, oh, that's a, absolutely how I'm going to use it. Um, and you can kind of have that as a frame of reference as we continue our discussion here today. And I just also wanna let you know, it's completely okay to shift gears. So what I mean by that is, Sometimes if you have been doing something a certain way in your classroom and you already feel like you have a good system, you might be thinking, 
why might I want to shift gears or how do I do this? How do I even get started? I'm not sure. So what I have on the screen here are a couple questions that you might ask yourself. So thinking first, what did you include in a paper portfolio? So when I started teaching, when I you know started teaching kindergarten, it was all paper. Um, so we li literally had physical portfolios that most of the time it was me trying to stuff, you know, the pieces of work in and collect it from students and, you know, get that, get that all crammed in that paper portfolio. So if you're using that as your starting point, it's, it's kind of an easy way to begin to think about what did you include in that paper portfolio? And again, why was it included in there? Who is the audience at the end that is going to either get this portfolio or view aspects of this portfolio? The other thing to think about is maybe you aren't using paper portfolios, but you maybe have binders, right? So I, I also myself transitioned into that as well. So maybe you have binders where you're keeping, you know, papers on assessment or checklists or, you know, other pieces of work that you still have in a binder. Think about how you might be able to shift gears and how that could potentially live in Seesaw. And the third thing I want you to start thinking about is what do you currently do to prepare for conferences? So I know uh, when we talk about family conferences or parent teacher conferences, um, we all kind of maybe have our different routine for getting ready for those. And normally, they're a lot of work, right? You're, you're, always, you're always kind of trying to plan, what are you gonna talk about? What are you gonna show? What are the discussion uh, points or conversations you're hoping to have with families? So we're gonna get to kind of touch on all of those today as we get started here. So the first thing I actually want to show you, and I, I'm gonna, before I hop into this slide, I'm actually gonna go into a Seesaw class. So this is a third grade class that I use for various sessions. And what I first of all wanna point out to you is that Seesaw itself is creating a portfolio for each of your students. So when you're in Seesaw and you're in as a teacher, when you scroll, you are seeing your entire class's journal or portfolio. But as you know, each of these individual student names, if I click on Allie, for example, now I am just seeing her individual portfolio. So already just embedded in Seesaw, you are already creating that digital portfolio for each student. So anytime that they are posting, you're already doing it. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it was that easy? And I'm gonna say, yes, it was, okay? So that's really step, step one, is to realize, again, transferring from maybe what you were using in a paper portfolio or a binder, a lot of that can just go into Seesaw and save you a whole lot of hauling and shuffling and sorting and organizing. So number one, you probably, it, it's probably already more organized if it's inside Seesaw. But this, the next thing I actually wanna talk about is how to get even more organized when you start using folders in Seesaw. And again, folders are really used as a way to filter a student's portfolio, okay? So when I go into my third grade class right here, I can create all sorts of folders. So in order to do that, I first can start in the upper right in my class settings. So I can tap on the wrench. And once I tap on the wrench, I will be able to scroll all the way down here to a section that says folders. Now, you can choose to manage folders and what that is gonna do, it's gonna bring you to all of the folders you have created. So let's start there. Now you can see, I already have some folders created for this class. Um, you'll also notice some of these folder names have emojis pasted in, and that is a pro tip uh, for those of you that are maybe working with younger students. That's a really good way to kind of give them that picture cue as well as to what folder they are adding to. Now, in order to create a folder, it's as easy as just tapping create folder. I'm gonna choose a color, and I actually am on a MacBook, so I am going to Say, I'm going to get emoji.com by the way <laughs> um, because I like to go here sometimes and copy and paste um, from here so 
So I'm actually going to copy this little detective folder or emoji. I'm just going to paste it right there and I'm going to call this science explorations. Okay, so there is my folder. Now, again, you can paste an emoji in to the name of the folder. Again, the reason we're doing that is just to give a little picture cue if you're working with itty bitties or littles. Um, the other thing I wanna show you is this one up here at the top has a period at the beginning of the name. And that is a special tip to let you know that that folder is going to rise to the top of all of your other folders, okay? So if you're, if you're doing something where you want students to just pick one specific folder and not have them try to, you know, search through these, then you would maybe use that trick. Um, so I've created a folder, Science Explorations. Now, what does this look like in my class? So if I X out of there, I'm still in class settings. I want to look at this option right here, show add to folder step. Right now, if I click on here, there are three options. Do you never wanna show this? That means you don't have folders set up. Um, do you want only teachers to be able to see the opportunity to add to a folder? Or would you also like students to have the opportunity, uh, oh my goodness, opportunity to add to a folder as well? So if you want your students adding to a folder as they are posting to Seesaw, make sure you have this option selected. So I'm just gonna go like that. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is actually show you the flow of this. And I'm gonna go to the green add button. I, because I'm signed in as a teacher, I'm just gonna choose post student work. I'm gonna draw a wonderful masterpiece right here. And I'm gonna tap the green check in the upper right. I'm gonna choose my name. I'm playing around, so I'm gonna say sample student. Um, upper right for the green check. And now I have my opportunity to choose a folder. So I'm gonna put this in science explorations. Your students can also choose multiple folders as well. So if you are doing you know, an amazing lesson that really incorporates all sorts of subject areas, they can also tag those folders. So, just because I created science explorations, we're going with that one. I'm gonna tap the green check and that post is being uploaded and added. Now, of course, because I'm in the, teach, in the teacher view, I don't have to approve it because I just posted as a teacher. So you'll see under the post, it is tagged with the science exploration folder, okay? So I can also go to previous posts and just tap the folder icon under it and then put it in a folder. So maybe I want this one to go in social studies and best of third grade. I don't know, I'm making it up. Tap the green check and you'll see it's tagged with those two folders. Um, again, I can go to each of these and add it to a folder. I could do that one at a time. So that is something you could do after the fact. If you're just starting to use folders now and you have a lot of content in your class, you could do that. Now, the great thing about folders and why they're helpful is because right now, if I tap on the class journal, that means everything in my class, I can tap on the right and I can see this folder icon. If I click there, I am able to say, oh, I only wanna see math items right now. So I'm gonna click on math and then my feed is only going to show math work, okay? So that's one way to filter. It, it helps, of course, to have the folder. I could also click on an individual student name. So I'm going to Angela. And if I click on Angela, I can tap on the right. And then I could choose, oh, I'm gonna go to, Angela's got nothing in a folder. So uh, if I chose math, it would show all of the math work in that one place. Let's try that with Karina. She might have more work in folders. Let's see. Oh, look at this. So Karina has three items in the best of third grade. So here they are. Okay, so speaking of best of third grade, if you actually go to our YouTube channel, there's a whole video about this concept of creating a best of folder that will come in handy at the end of your school year. Um, it might also be something that you want to create in your classroom if you're doing student-led conferences, and we'll talk about that as we kind of keep progressing. The other thing I wanna show you here, if I tap on this folder, I also have a private teacher only folder. And that is available if you have the premium features of Seesaw included in Seesaw Plus or Seesaw for Schools. Now, what it means is exactly what it says here, teachers only. So that means if you 
put something in a private teacher only folder, no one will see it. Families don't get notified, students don't see it, only you have access to it. So you might use that if you know you have a specific assessment that you don't want to share or post, you could put it there, for example. Okay, so I'm gonna get back into our slides and show you a couple more things. So the other thing to think about is when you are starting with folders, it's best to not go too wild. Okay, start with a few key folders. In my classroom, we started with the writing folder and that's, that's what we started with first because that's what I was ready to organize to kind of the next level. Um, we just show, I just showed you how you go to manage class or your class settings and then that show to students and teachers stuff and we just created some. So I kind of already showed you that. The other thing to think about too is if you or if you have a co-teacher or like a specialist for example maybe you create a folder for the specialist so that when they are posting from the specialist class then that work can be tagged with that class so there's a little bit more context for families as well when they see it um, other options is what i call a wow work folder so that might be something where again you're having students reflect and pick out their best pieces to highlight in a certain folder or a conference folder as well if there are certain things you want to pull out to just show at conferences um, which we'll talk about in a little bit but we love to have easing workflow goals, right? So I'm gonna give you a couple tips um, how your workflow might be eased here. Um, boy, whew, we've all been here, right? When you're hauling home all sorts of binders and stacks and notebooks and all of that. So again, think of Seesaw as this place that all of that can live so you're not trying to get that organized and haul it home in your wheelie cart and all of that so when i was one of the ways that i share and explain about the use of folders and or portfolio is with writer's workshop so again when you're using seesaw you are already creating a portfolio for each student just by having them post now as I mentioned a moment ago, I started with a writing folder because I wanted to have a very, um, a folder that really showed my student's growth specifically related to writing. So at the end of every month, uh, the students would choose one piece, their very best piece that they would you know, decide um, to add to Seesaw. And of course they were posting with Seesaw during writer's workshop at other times. However, this was the one time during the month that they chose one that would go inside the writing folder. And I did that so we would have a sample from September and October and November and December so we could filter by that folder and really, really see that growth quite quickly um, and have that those pieces to really highlight that. Um, when we're talking about easy workflow, it's also good to know that you can tag an activity with a folder before you assign it to your students. So as I just demonstrated before, if you're at this session, you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much work in my CSAW class, I want it all organized in folders. You could do that. I mean, you could just go at it, right? Or you could start when you are sharing an activity, you could start by posting, uh, tagging a folder. So let me just show you what that looks like. So as a teacher, if I were going to assign an activity and let's say related to what I was just saying about writing, maybe it's a, an assessment or a piece of work that you want to have from every single student and you wanna make sure that's in their portfolio, say for conferences. So what I would do, um, I think a great place to start actually is in our Seesaw Activity Library and the Getting Started Collection because in the Getting Started Collection, um, there is an activity that includes um, writing and reflecting. So I'm in third grade right now. Um, so I'm gonna tap on this one. This is Write and Reflect. So a little slightly different than what you'd see in my kindergarten class with Writer's Workshop, but I'm gonna choose Assign. 
And I'm going to just pick, I have lots of classes, so don't be alarmed. Um, I'm going to choose this class, but right now I can tap over here to folders and I can choose the folder I would like to tag with this post. So I'm going to say writing folder um, and then I'm going to tap the green check. And when I assign this to this class, I'm actually gonna put it in a different class. How about the class I'm in, the third grade rock star class, right? The one that we're, we've we been playing in. I'm gonna go to folders again, sorry. Um, and of course I don't have a writing folder, so let's create one quickly. So I'm gonna create our writing folder. There it is. So when I share this out, as students respond to this activity, it's already going to be tagged with the folder. So let me just pretend I'm a student. I'm gonna respond quickly, okay? So in the example, there was the note, I love third grade. Your students are gonna be much more impressive than this right now. I'm gonna tap the check. And you'll notice that it's going to be added and you'll see the folders already tagged right there, which is awesome. Again, saving you some time as a teacher. Um, the other thing I want to show you then is one more thing that might come in handy when you're getting organized um, and using folders. So the other thing that you can do is you can tap the folder icon here and say I'm doing a special project or say there's something, one particular piece for conferences that I want to display outside my classroom. I could go to the folder for that special project and then I have the option of printing a PDF. So what this will do is this will print um, a PDF of all the pieces of work in this folder. So if you need to if you're creating a digital portfolio, but maybe you are still required to have a paper copy of a portfolio, this could be an option for you. So it comes with a nice little cover page and then it shows all of the posts and the QR code that would lead to the post. So if you're doing a hallway display, this would also um, come in handy too. That option you are going to see on a computer from the website that print PDF when you sort by a specific folder. Okay. So talking about preparing for conferences, right? So everyone kind of, you know, it could be a stressful situation, but a couple of things I want to show you. Number one, we have a website completely devoted to preparing for conferences. So the address is right here. So make sure you hop onto that site and really think through and um, look at our tips of how you can save some time preparing for conferences. And I kind of already showed you step one, um, preparing and maybe creating a conferences folder. The other thing I want to let you know about as well, when you're using digital portfolios, teachers have this moment of panic. And I had it myself, my first year using Seesaw. I thought, oh my gosh, wait a second, what's gonna happen? I've the parents have already seen all this stuff in Seesaw. What am I gonna show them? What am I gonna talk about? Right? Couple things. <laughs> Number one, what I realized was that conversations can move beyond revealing. Okay. I don't think any family member loves to be surprised at a conference. So the fact that your families have seen this work in Seesaw is not a big deal. That's great because when they come in, you are not, you know, showing them something they've never seen and that can create a lot of stress. Um, but you're able to really show progress over time, add additional context to the conversation and really focus on next steps and have time for that conversation within that 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes that you have, you're not spending the majority of your time revealing to them um, and showing things, them things for the very first time. So that is a common question that we get like, oh, I wanna edit to see that, but I don't want parents to see it because we're gonna talk about it at conferences. I would really encourage you to move beyond that, give it a try, it's okay to share it ahead of time and just go with it. Now, if you really, really, really don't want them to see it, you could use a private teacher folder that I did show you, but I highly recommend that you just go with it and give it a try and really enjoy those deeper conversations that you can have because you're talking beyond um, that, you know, revealing for the first time and showing work that way. So, boy, we went really, really fast. 
and we have some time for questions. I also want to pause and give the code if you're looking for the certificate. If you're watching the recording, the code is 837 261 and questions. I'm going to pop into questions right now. And before I get into them, I'm going to give you a moment to type, but please visit our community on all of these different channels. If you're not already connected, that's a fun place to hop in the conversation.